Hi, Megan Denver here. We are at Lindale Laboratories at Cornell University. Today we're going to talk about bee hunting a little bit, show you some of the more esoteric techniques to bee hunting, and um, for kind of why bee hunting is important and why the wild bees are important. And uh, I thought that was Tom, that's why I stopped, so why don't we start again? <laughs> so we're off to find Tom Seeley. We know he's at a local nature preserve, and he's been here earlier in the week and found honeybees on the goldenrod, which are a really great flower to capture honeybees on. So it's beautiful goldenrod this time of year, and Tom's going to show us how to use his bee box. So here's the front chamber, rear chamber. Front chamber has the one with the door that opens. Rear chamber is the one that has the window with the shutter. And here's the divider in the middle that enables a bee that's been caught in the front chamber to work her way to the window in the rear chamber. And we can close everything back up. That's our bee box. Capturing honeybees in your bee box can require cat-like reflexes, and we can see Tom's had years of practice. Snap the box shut. Yep, there's the bee. We'll close the box on the flower with the bee on it. Not sure I got her, but let's see. One, two... Yep. Three bees in the box now. Great. And one thing I want to point out is that you're not hurting these bees at all, you're just trapping them. And in fact, you're going to be introducing them to a wonderful free lunch momentarily. And uh, So now, you can see we've got three bees accumulated in the rear chamber, so that when we put a comb filled with sugar syrup in the front chamber, it's going to be a little group of bees that are being introduced to that, to that free lunch, not just one. So we're going to try to capture um, up to six bees in the bee box, any more than that, and they start kind of flying around a little bit. But you can get two to three pretty easily, and then uh, six to eight with a little bit more luck. So we'll just spend some time in the field trying to capture a couple and see um, how we do. It's a beautiful day here in Ithaca, so we should have a good shot at it. Okay, so now we've got several bees in the box. Let's see. In the window, I see, I count one, two, three honeybees in the box and a bumblebee, which was caught just for fun. And the bumblebee, too, will enjoy this sumptuous meal that we're about to offer. At this point, I'm going to set up the feeding station. I, I made a little table, which makes it convenient. It's painted yellow to make it conspicuous to the bees. old piece of square of comb. I've got my jar of sugar syrup. And I use a canning jar to carry the sugar syrup around because these canning jars have nice lids that don't have a seal so that sugar syrup doesn't leak and you don't get real sticky. And I've got a little dropper bottle, an eyedropper, so I can neatly fill the cells in the square of comb. If I tried to pour the sugar syrup straight from the jar into the comb, it would just, it wouldn't fill the comb nicely and there'd be a lot of spillage. Okay, so I've got this pretty well filled, or filled enough. Being a comb, this will be very familiar to the bees. They'll know how to orient to it. They'll climb onto it easily. Okay, so I've got the comb nice, nicely filled. I put my, put that back in my toolkit box. Close up the sugar syrup tightly. Now I've got my comb filled with sugar water. You can see it glistening, and I'm ready to give it to the to the bees. I've got three bees in the bee box here, and I'm going to introduce them to this comb filled with sh the sugar syrup. That's by tucking the comb in here in the front chamber. 
and I raise the mi middle divider so that the bees can come forward to the comb. And this may look weird, but I'm covering the bee box to put it in shadow so that the bees aren't drawn to the light that comes in the cracks around the doors and the sliders and so forth. And then we'll just let it sit here for five minutes. In fact, I'll make note of the time to give them plenty of time to stumble upon this, uh, this amazing food source that we've just, just created for, the, for them. Okay, the bees are, are in the bee box, hopefully discovering the comb that we put in there that's filled with sugar syrup. While, we're, uh, while they're doing that, let's, let's do this. And what we're doing here is we're setting up a couple of things that will help mark this location very conspicuously to the bees so they can find their way back here very easily. One thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting some, a couple drops of anise extract in this jar lid and that will mark this site in terms of scent. Uh, there's, there's not, there are not anise flowers in this area so the only place around here that will smell strongly of the aroma of anise will be our feeding station. And the other thing that will mark this site, make it conspicuous, is that I've got this little cover that goes over the jar lid holding the anise extract and you can see I've painted it bright blue. So uh, this will also help mark this location. So this will be conspicuous to the bees in, in two senses, both through the scent and through the color. Okay, we're almost ready. To, I think we're about ready to let the bees out of the bee box. Okay. Okay, now we're at the point we've let the we've left the bees inside the covered bee box for five minutes. And we can we're at the point where we can let the bees out of the box. Presumably, hopefully, they've all there were three worker bees and honeybees in there. Presumably they've all found the sugar syrup by now. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently open the front door so we don't spook them. And there they are. They've, it's clear that they've learned, they've discovered the sugar syrup because they've flown out and have done some orientation movements back and forth in front of the box so that they can memorize what this place looks like. And now we will see if they come back. And when they do, to help them find the, make it easy for them to find this place, I'm going to put the comb right there so it's out in the open and they can find it easily. Now we have a few minutes to wait and see if our bees return. Perfect. Okay, that bee's come back. She's got her tongue in the sugar syrup in the, one of the combs. And she she will almost certainly continue coming here for as long as we provide sugar syrup. I like to say she's now, she's our bee. Now there's a third and a fourth bee. I'd say that almost certainly somebody has done a, a waggle dance, probably a very enthusiastic waggle dance to advertise this food source. Okay, that bee, that, that bee went right in. She's had experience here. Okay, now we've got a second bee loading. Now there's a fifth bee over here by the, by the chair. It often helps once one bee loads, that seems to guide the other bees into how to find the food. Okay, this looks really good. As I said before, when, those, when you see a bee loading up like that, that means that bee is learning this location, she's excited about the location, and she will, she will come back for more. Okay, looks like we've got two bees here now, so we're ready to start labeling bees. I'm going to label them for individual identification so we can get their round trip time. What I used to label bees is this paint set. These are it's a set of paints using shellac in which I've mixed ground artist pigment 
You can use lots of different things. You could use um, watercolor paints. You could use paint pens. I use this particular means of labeling them these because they, each color has a soft little brush, a little soft artist artist brush, and so I can apply the paint very, very gently to the back of a bee. Let me demonstrate. I'm opening a little pot of orange paint that I've mixed up. Get just a little touch of it on the tip of my tip of my brush, and I gently will bring it down, put it on the bee. Thus. So that bee is now orange thorax. This bee, I'll put a little paint on her abdomen. She's orange abdomen. They do get spooked a little sometimes when that happens. But they'll be okay. The food is so, so enticing to the bees. One of my bees, purple thorax, flew off over a poplar tree in the direction of that poplar tree at least. So I've got my compass, my sighting compass out, and I'm just going to get a, get a read on her departure direction. Biologists call that the vanishing bearing. So her vanishing bearing was 230 degrees. That's pretty useful information. It's been known to take days, months, even years to find a bee tree, but today we have luck on our side. We have marked bees making round trips under five minutes, and we know from Tom's research that that means the hive is less than a quarter mile away. So Tom's headed off in their direction, and I'm close behind. So we found the hive, but it wasn't in a live pine tree, it was in a dead pine tree just off the preserve next to an old farmhouse. It had two entrances, and Tom was able to talk to the owner and get a little history on this pine tree. This tree was killed by a lightning strike. He had the top taken off for reasons of safety, and that they left the rest of the tree here in, in that state so that they didn't damage the bees, which is a good, I'm really glad to learn that. And we've just explained that that's, that's actually what, uh, what we think is the appropriate way to end a bee hunt today, is, is to admire and enjoy the tree, but to leave it unharmed, leave the colony of bees unharmed. The state forest behind us is about 6,500 acres, and from Tom's work at Cornell's Arnott Forest, we know there's about 2.5 wild honeybee trees per square mile. So that's 10 square miles in front of us, and that's about 25 wild bee trees just waiting to be found. For more information on how to find wild honeybee trees, check out Tom's book, Following the Wild Bees, by Princeton University Press. And if you're lucky enough to find a wild honeybee tree, I would encourage you not to disturb it in any way. And maybe just go out and visit it a couple times a year and check on it. And just know you found one of nature's most beautiful treasures. <laughs>